What's up guys? So previously on this channel, I traveled across the US trying out different airlines. That was a really fun journey where I got to experience a lot of cool airlines here in the US. This time around, I'm going on a short trip to India and decided to book myself on a bunch of different airlines in the Middle East as well as in India. The first leg of this trip is going to be on board Qatar Airways, which will take me all the way from Los Angeles to Doha and then after a two hour layover from Doha till Dubai. All right, cool. Let's get to the airport now. Made it to LAX. Fun fact about this place. So the Tom Bradley International Terminal is named after a mayor. He was the first black mayor of LA and he served in office from 1973 to 1993. 20 years. Quite a long time. Anyways, this terminal is named after him. And uh, yeah, right now just making my way inside. And let's see uh, if we can get through the check-in. Let's go. The reason I was unsure whether I'd even be allowed to check in is because having an Indian passport, you need a valid visa for the UAE in order to be able to travel to the country, which I did not have. I did some research though, and anyone with a valid US, UK, or Schengen visa could apply for a visa on arrival in the UAE. Given that the second leg of this trip was from Abu Dhabi to Mumbai airport, I would need to be able to enter the UAE to go from the Dubai airport to the Abu Dhabi airport. This was my first time applying for a visa on arrival in the UAE and I was hoping that this information was correct so I could board the flight and make my way to India. Anyways, let's go back to the airport now. Alright, so I made my way into the airport and to the check-in counters hoping that I'd be allowed to check in. I was pleasantly surprised to see the short lines for the check-in counters. After a short wait, I made my way over to an agent and started the check-in process. Once my tickets, documents, and luggage were checked, I was informed of the first obstacle that would stand in my way. Alright, so I'm told my bag over here is just a little overweight. I need to go grab a lock so I can check it in. So I made my way to the closest airport shop to find some locks that I could buy so I can lock up the bag and send it as checked in luggage. Got the locks. Ah! Locked up the bag. Yeah, let's, let's go back to the line now. I made my way back to the check-in counters for my second attempt at checking in. This time around, it took a bit longer than the first time, but after doing the ticket and document checks, I was given some good news. But the good news was also presented with another obstacle. Alright guys, so got the boarding passes, but I dropped the keys to the lock somewhere, so just retracing my steps here, so I found it. I see it. It is right here. Wah! Boom. Found it. All right, cool. Got the boarding passes. On to security now. And uh, yeah, we're going to Dubai. On my way to the security gates, I noticed that there was a food court right after the check-in counters. This is great because even if you're at the airport a bit too early, you don't have to wait till after security to get some food. I'm making my way to the security gates now, but uh, before we do that, let's uh, get a glimpse of this. There were some decent views of the flights parked outside before even clearing security and making it to the gates. Alright guys, so made it past check-in and made it past security as well, so now let's, uh, let's play our favorite game here. Airports or Scareport. Right after clearing security, there's a bridge that leads towards the concourse of Terminal B. Once inside the concourse, there are pillars that present the flight information and also directions to the gates. Large signs also help direct you to the right gate. 
having all the gates and direction to the gates clearly marked and labeled, boom, airport. There are plenty of shops here. Most of them are fashion-centered designer brands and also some electronic stores, bookstores, and newsstands. Plenty of shops, not a bad thing. Even if you're not buying anything, you could always browse the shops as you wait for your flight. Boom, plus one, airport. Vending machines are present, like this one that sells cosmetics by Kylie Jenner, a vending machine that sells cupcakes, and also this one that sells food, mostly salads. The Kylie Jenner cosmetics vending machine and the Sprinkles cupcake vending machine are definitely more of a gimmick, but the Farmer's Fridge vending machine that sells food, that's actually pretty cool and pretty useful, especially if you're there on an overnight layover and all the restaurants are closed. Boom. Plus one, airport. There are plenty of accessible women's and men's bathrooms, as well as all gender bathrooms. There's also a hydration station with accessible drinking water. Hopefully, you're gonna find bathrooms at every airport you go to, so that's not a pretty big thing. But I have seen airports where there was no hydration station. So having a place where you can get some drinking water, boom, airport. There's plenty of seating available by the gates, and also along with that, there are plenty of places to charge your electronic devices conveniently. There are also larger couch-like structures on which you could take a nap if you're here on an overnight layover. As for seating, having plenty of seating is always good, as this means you can go sit somewhere in private as you wait for the flight, and not have to be in between many people. Now, although these bean-shaped couches were not the most sleeping friendly, they're still better than having to sleep on the floor on an overnight layover. Places to charge your electronic devices. At LAX, I noticed that they have them under the seat. Also, I believe at Atlanta Airport, it was a similar setup, but most other airports I've been to <laughs> do not have this kind of a setup. Um, you'll see more about that in future videos. So in my books, boom, plus one, airport. There are plenty of restaurants and cafes where you can get proper food. Also, there's a food court with some fast food options as well. I was hoping there would be a Burger King here, but uh, there's not. No Burger King. Boom. Scareport. On a more serious note, there were tons of options to get proper food and also some fast food restaurants having different options for food. Boom. Plus one. Airport. There was also a beach-themed kids' playing area, which was cool. Having a place where you can drop off your kids and forget about them for a couple of hours. Boom. Plus one. Airport. Free public Wi-Fi was available throughout the terminal, and the download and upload speeds were pretty decent. Accessible public Wi-Fi that doesn't require you to sign up. Boom. Plus one. Airport. Finally, for all you plane spotters out there, there were plenty of places to get decent views of the flights outside. Some spots to get unobstructed views were by gate 134 and 159. Watching planes is always fun and a great way to pass time when you're at the airport. So having plenty of views to the flights outside, boom, plus one airport. So our total tally comes out to 9 for airport and 1 for scareport, making the Tom Bradley International Terminal at LAX officially an airport. In all seriousness though, the Tom Bradley International Terminal at LAX is a pretty decent terminal. The lines at the security gate were pretty short and everyone working at the airport was pretty friendly. Now, that aside, there are vending machines present where you can get food 24 hours a day, so even if you are here on an overnight layover, you would still have options for food. Outside of that, if you're just at the airport for under three hours, it should be a perfectly fine place to spend your time. All right, boarding time. Let's, uh, let's see how it is. I can't talk. Let's see how it is on board. Boarding was done on time and everything was very organized. I made my way on board to a friendly welcome and made my way to the seat I'd selected. 19A.
Alright, so on board this Qatar Airways A350, there was a decent amount of leg space, and although the seat wasn't too plush, it was still fairly comfortable. The seat back pocket featured a safety information card and a barf bag. Right above the tray, there was an NFC reader and a universal power plug. Then there was also this foldable seat back tray. Although initially I didn't care for it, over time I really loved this clicking lock instead of the usual manual locks in most aircrafts. We'll do a deep dive into the entertainment system at a later point, but for now there was a decent sized entertainment system which was very responsive. The overhead panels featured individual AC vents and individual reading lights. Waiting at the seat for me was a pillow, a blanket, and a headset. There was also this mystery bag at every seat. I opened it up and was surprised to see that it was an amenity kit that contained a brush with some toothpaste, a pair of earplugs, an eye mask, and a pair of socks. I felt that this was a pretty nice touch, as I hadn't seen an amenity kit on boards of flight in economy class for quite some time. Eventually, the seatbelt signs came on, and we taxied our way onto the runway and prepared for takeoff. What's up guys? So we just uh, took off about 10-15 minutes ago. The snack service came in really quick, literally minutes after takeoff. I got myself a coke, some crackers, and uh, some water. Anyways, i um, still got about 14 and a half hours on board this flight. Good thing is I do have the whole row to myself, so that's amazing. Cool, so after the snacks were done, I went on a deep dive of the entertainment system. There was an in-flight map with many different viewing options. Overhead, bottom, and front cameras were also available for view on this flight. The movies section contained movies from all over the world. A large selection of old and new movies were available for streaming on board. Plenty of TV shows and kids content was available as well. Being a Middle Eastern Airlines, the Holy Quran was available to stream in visual and audio format. What I really wanted to dive into here was the music section. I remember last time when I was on board Qatar Airways, they had albums from one of my favorite bands, Opeth, available to stream on board. This time around, unfortunately, I did not find Opeth on there, but there was plenty of music from other bands that I liked, such as Slipknot, Foo Fighters, Pantera, and some other great classic rock and metal artists. Oh, also, I forgot to mention earlier, the seat featured an adjustable headrest that you could adjust from top to bottom and from the sides. Alright ladies and gentlemen, lunch is served. About an hour or two into the flight, the lunch service began. The utensils were all silverware. As for the actual meal itself, there was garlic-infused bread, a farro salad, a mango mascarpone, the Italians would say it as mascarpone, and for the main course, I went with the vegetarian option, which was the creamy tortellini pasta. I'll be honest though, so I'm not the best food critic. I generally don't have strong preferences when it comes to food, except for burgers. Burgers are great. This pasta, it's good. Alright, so now was the perfect time to check out the in-flight Wi-Fi. 
there was Wi-Fi available on board, and passengers who were a part of the Qatar Airways Privilege Club program could access the internet for free for an hour. If you wanted a full flight access to the Wi-Fi, it was available for $10, which, to be honest, is not bad at all, especially compared to what other airlines charge. The download speeds on board were also pretty decent. The lavatory on board this Qatar Airways A350 was of a decent size. The sink also was of a decent size. The bottle containing the purple soap was also of a decent size. There were cups with which you could rinse your mouth and an eau de toilette bottle of a decent size. I'm not sure whether this was a disposal area for syringes or if there were syringes in there, but that space was also of a decent size. There were many closets that contained different utilities and all the utilities looked of a decent size. What I did like about this lavatory was the faux marble finish, which looked very aesthetic and sleek and of a decent size. A short while after returning from the decent sized bathroom, a second snack service commenced. I forgot to mention this earlier, but there was a pretty wide selection of beverages available on board, as you can see here. For this snack, I opted for the pizza flavored pastry, along with a Coke and some water. After the second snack service was done, we got a glimpse of this beautiful sunrise while we were over the Faroe Islands. Shortly after watching the sunrise, I got up to stretch my legs, and that's when I noticed how spacious this galley on board the A350 was. There were drinks and snacks laid out here so passengers could come grab them whenever in between meal services. I wanted to take some time to talk about the service on board. The cabin crew on board this flight were incredible. To be honest, that is somewhat expected given that Qatar Airways ranks as one of the best airlines in the world. And of course, that is for this precise reason. But having said that, when I was walking around the galley, I got the opportunity to talk to a couple of the crew members and they were incredibly friendly, not just because it was a job, but they were truly passionate about what they do. One more thing I did notice when I was in the galley was at one point, one of the crew members came by with one of the passenger's kids as the passenger wanted to get some sleep and couldn't do so with their kid around. So this crew member brought the kid back to the galley and brought out all the cool toys and started playing with the kid and taking care of the kid in a very, very friendly way. This is the kind of service which I would call above and beyond the call of duty. I definitely wanted to highlight that here as even with the top ranking airlines, you don't always see amazing service like this. Anyways, back on board now. Two or three hours before landing, as we cruised above the clouds over Europe, the final meal service commenced. This was the second full meal on board this flight. It consisted of another infused bread, a seasonal fruit salad, and a Greek yogurt with raspberry coolis. In French, this would be pronounced Kouli. Kouli. Once again, I opted for the vegetarian option, which was the stir fry lo mein noodles with Asian vegetables. Eventually, we made our way above the Persian Gulf, and I want to say I got some cool views from above, but the engine and the wing obstructed that. To be fair though, we did need the engine and the wing to make it this far, so I can't blame them for doing their job. Before landing, we were shown a commercial highlighting all the attractions in Qatar. Shortly after, we made our way above the coast of Qatar, and then it was time for landing. Alright guys, so that was a great flight on board Qatar Airways A350. Now, let's break it down. The hard product. The seats were comfortable and had a decent amount of legroom. The cabin felt very sleek, airy, and clean. 
The onboard entertainment system is definitely one of the best and offers an incredible amount of content. Now, as far as the soft product, the service, that's what I really feel either makes or breaks in airlines. You could have the best seats in the world, but if the service on board and at airports isn't great, no one's going to want to fly that airline. The personnel working for Qatar Airways starting at LAX airport all the way till the end of the flight and even at Doha airport were absolutely incredible and friendly. The service on board also felt very personal and warm. Now, as far as the cost goes, I paid a total of 603 US dollars for my trip from Los Angeles all the way to Dubai. When compared with other airlines that service this route, it sits in about the same range as some of the other competitors who aren't 5-star rated airlines, making this an absolutely incredible value. How will my experience on board Qatar Airways compare with Etihad and Emirates? Well, stay tuned for the next couple of videos to find out. Anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys now. Have your experiences on board Qatar Airways been the same as mine? Would you recommend them to someone? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.